In this video, I'm going to illustrate how to make a Pareto chart. I'm using Tableau 2020.1 and the Simple Superstore database. If you don't know how to get to that Sample Superstore data set, you go ahead and you um, go up to the Tableau icon and it's in the Save Data Sources down there where you see the arrow. And now we'll go back. So in this data set, it's probably very familiar to you. We have a set of orders, we have customers, et cetera, a bunch of data about orders. So in a Pareto chart, we are going to try to illustrate what proportion of customers is responsible for what proportion of profit, all right? So this is kind of like a running sum line. Now, it is a running sum line. This is a couple of annotations we have to add. We're have to, gonna have to talk about how we do this percentage for the y-axis and the percentage for the x-axis. And we're gonna have to do a calculation for this axis. This is kind of an, a weird uh, Pareto chart because it has this negative component to it. Now we wouldn't typically want negative uh, profit customers. And so this would be a great way of illustrating to management what customers we might wish to fire. Uh, because we're actually just losing money on this last 20% of our customers. That might uh, be something management is interested in, all right? So anyway, we're going to build this. It's about a 13-step process. None of the steps are hard, but we have to do them in the right order and kind of understand exactly why um, we're doing things in which order, all right? So I'm starting with a fresh chart here. And the first thing we're gonna do for our Pareto chart is we're gonna get the data into the chart that we need, all right? And that data that we need is profit by customer. So I'm gonna drop customer name into columns and profit into rows. And Tableau by default tries to choose the graph that it thinks is most appropriate. And this column chart might be the most appropriate um, choice. For our purposes, we need this data to be in a different order than alphabetical as it currently is. We actually need that in descending order by profit. So we'll just click on um, descending, the descending icon up here. And now we've got all of our columns in the right order. And again, we've got all these customers way out here that are negative customers that we might want to uh, address why we've got negative profit customers. But the last thing we need is, you know, we need all of these um, columns to be on one screen. So we'll go ahead and fit, we'll change that fit from standard to entire view. And now we've got all the data we need for our graph on the screen. And now we just need to reshape it to do what we're trying to do, all right? So the first thing we're trying to do is create that running total of profit along this axis. So for that, we're gonna go up here to the sum of profit pill. We're gonna click the drop down, and we're gonna choose quick table calculation running total. And all of a sudden this starts to look like the shape that we had in that finished Pareto I showed a couple minutes ago, but it's still a column chart we want this to be a line graph. So instead, we'll come over here to the marks card. We will click the drop down next to automatic and we will choose to make this a line. And for now, we've actually got the line for our graph basically completed. The other parts of the graph aren't completed. We don't have the Y axis for 100%. We don't have the X axis along 100%. We don't have our annotations yet, but the line is basically completed. Now, the next step is that we want to turn the y-axis into 0 to 100% as well. And for that, we, are, we could typically do that with a table calculation of percent of total. But we've already done a table calculation for running, sum, uh, running total sum. And so how would we do that? Well, you might not be aware, but most of you probably are, that when you create a table calculation, you can also create a second or secondary table calculation. To do that, we're gonna click on the drop down of our sum of profit pill. We're gonna to choose to edit the table calculation we've got. 
And then you'll see here that when we chose quick table calculation running total, um, we got running total sum by default. But what we want to do here is add a secondary calculation. And you'll see here that we've now got running total, and it shows difference from for the secondary calculation type. That's just the first one on the list. We want to choose percent of total. And so now we've got our line the way we had it before. That's what's coming from our running total. And then we've got percent of total, which is what's generating the 0 to 130% um, on our y-axis. Now, something I want you to notice right here is that by default, these calculations are being computed by table across, which basically means it's using the, the, the graph as we've set it up by using the columns and rows, pills, to set up the graph. And to do this calculation of running total, it's going along this graph, the x-axis. And if we changed what's in the x-axis, this calculation is still going to be using the x-axis for the calculation. That'll become important in a second. I just wanted you to notice here that the compute using is on table across. All right. So now how do we get this x-axis to be 0 to 100% as well? Well, we're going to have to do a calculation for that. And we're going to have to use two Tableau functions. One is called index, and one is called size. So. Index versus size. Index and size are two functions that are part of Tableau. And this, I set up this little visualization just to kind of illustrate for you what is actually going on with index versus size. All right. So index and size are both dependent upon the data that you've put into the view. In this case, we have 793 client records. So what size tells you is it says, based upon the, the view that you've created, how many records are you showing in this view? And index and size, both are calculated as the, the visualization is created, right? They're not cal calculated beforehand because they're dependent upon all of the filters and all of the sorts to understand what the results of those um, functions will be. Now, size will always be the same for every row or every column or every data point in a view. If we filtered out half of the customers, the size would change to maybe 350, but the size would be the same for every single row. Index is based upon where a particular record is in order in the uh, array of rows or columns, okay? And index will change based upon where, how you filter things or how you sort things. So for instance, if I sort customer name descending, a new customer is index one. Where I go back to ascending, a different customer is index one. And so what we can do is we can take this index where we know where I am along the graph, I know how big the graph is, and so I can actually just do some simple division to figure out the percentage along the graph that I've gotten, right? So how far along the graph is this one? Well, it's 26 divided by 793. Um, how long is, you know, whatever, right? And we can do that for every single row. Now, here's how we do it. We come over here to our measures. We right click and we choose Create Calculated Field. We're going to call this one percent along axis rather than percent of customers because we can use this percent along axis in any visualization that we're doing, whether it's about customers or products, et cetera. All right. So for this function, we're going to use index divided by size. That's it. Index divided by size. Once you've got that, go ahead and hit OK. Make sure you don't forget the parentheses. And now what we want to do is, because we're going to want to show this as a percentage, we're going to click the drop down for percent along axis. We're going to choose the default properties. We're going to choose number format. And we're going to choose percentage. Uh, for now, let's just show it with two decimal places and hit OK. And what is actually going on with that is, let's just take percent along axis and drop it in to our data table. 
And you can see what's happening here. For every row, we've calculated a different percentage, which is just index divided by size, until at the very end, we get to 1. 793 divided by 793 is 100%. All right? Now, just to, to illustrate that, I wanted to show two decimal places. But in our graph, we only want to show one. So I'm going to go back here. I could have formatted it in the graph, but I like to have my format set up here as much as possible in the default so I don't have to reformat every time I use it. So let's go to default properties, number format, and switch that just to zero decimal places. And that's how index versus size is going to calculate the percent along the x-axis for us. So we're going to, we don't want this list of customer names here anymore. What we want is that percent along axis to be showing here instead. So we're going to grab percent along axis and drop it up here in columns. Now do not delete customer name because we still need customer name in order to calculate our sum of profit, et cetera, because we really still want to use that sorted customer name. So I'm going to drop customer name over here into detail. Don't delete it. Drop it into the detail mark. And our whole graph gets messed up. That's OK. Now, we want to check one thing. Something that often happens, not every time, it's, it's, a, little, it's a little inconsistent, is notice now this customer name, we've lost that sort that we had before. So we have to make sure that customer name is now sorted by the field we want it to be sorted by. So I'm going to click on the drop down for customer name. I'm going to choose sort. And instead of the data source order, I want to, I want to uh, sort it by a different field, which is the profit field. And I want to sort it descending. So basically, all this is doing is reapplying the sort order we applied at the beginning. All right. And the, the important part of that is we're getting those customer names in the same order they were when we had them actually as part of the graph. And we'll see why in a second. So we've got our, our y-axis, which isn't going to 100% anymore. we got to sort that out. We, but we've got our x-axis doing perfectly, right? 0 to 100. Now, what's going on here? Remember back when we did the calculations? It computed using table across by default. Well, the problem here is that table across isn't what we previously used to calculate the running total. It was the customer name field. Now, we've still got the customer name field over here. And because it's in detail, it's available for us to use in computations. And so we're going to choose that compute using table across to compute using customer name. Still not fixed, but at least now you'll notice here, we've got our percentages back where we thought we would have them. The only other thing we've got to do is we've got to tell that percent along axis. Again, we didn't want it to actually use itself for the computation. We wanted it to use that sorted array of customer names. And so we go ahead and we change the compute using for percent along axis to customer name. And there's our curve. And we've got our x-axis and our y-axis. Got a little cleanup to do there, but we'll do that in a second. The last thing we need to do for our Pareto chart is put some annotations in to put the line for 20%, the line for 80%. So I'm going to right click on the x-axis and I'm going to choose add a reference line. Now in this particular case, it doesn't matter what the scope we choose is because we only have one pane in our table and we only have one cell in the pane because they're both continuous axes. So we're going to it doesn't matter which one we pick. I just like to leave it as per pane. Instead of a calculation, we want to put a constant value. And that constant value we want to put on the x-axis is 20%, but we don't want any label. And go ahead and hit OK. And we've got our x-axis annotation. Now we'll go ahead and do our y-axis annotation. So I'm going to come over here to the y-axis, right click, choose Add a Reference Line. Again, I want the constant, but this time my constant is 80%, so 0.8. And I don't want the label. And I've now got, and of course, we could format the lines, but for now, we're not going to. All right. 
And so now we've got our curve going through this 80-20 line. Now, obviously, if we pulled out these negative ones, it's not going to go quite through that, that, that intersection anymore. But this is basically a completed Pareto chart. Maybe one last thing we would want to do is change the name of these because percent along axis and percent of running of total running sum of profit is a little bit weird for um, our our users to understand. So we're going to right click the x axis and choose edit axis, and we could call this percent of customers or proportion of customers. I want that capitalized. Okay. And then on the y-axis, we'll do the same. And we're just going to choose this to percent of profit. And that's it. That's a Pareto chart in Tableau. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And down in the comments, let me know if there's other graphs you might want me to make a, a video to show a how-to in Tableau of how to do that. All right. Thanks a lot. And good luck with using Tableau.